so in the second part of the mechanics one the first part of mechanics and the second video on mechanics I'll be talking about the types of forces and uh, the actually some examples in which you may come across come across these forces so actually in the concept of mechanics there are various types of forces but these can be divided into four main types one is a weight right so weight you know that the weight is actually the product of mass and the gravitational acceleration the weight always acts downwards towards the uh, center of the earth regardless of the object's position or inclination now when you have a way when you have some object like this which, which has some mass if it is in a horizontal plane or if it is hanging on a vertical plane or if it is kept on an inclined plane whether it is where it is kept you can see that the weight you you know that right it's just a very simple occasion you know about the weight you you know about your own mass and your own weight you can calculate your weight so weight doesn't have to be I don't have to explain you about more about weight alright so the second type of forces is the normal force now when you keep an object on some surface whether it's a horizontal surface or an inclined surface what generally happens is that now as in the case of Newton's third law as explained in the case of Newton's third law what generally happens is that weight weight w equals mg is actually a push exerted by this object on this surface now when it is on an inclined surface when it is on an inclined surface this does not actually push the inclined surface but creates some force so that there is uh, some sort of a pressure or a strain on that inclined surface so that may sometimes not occur perpendicularly but uh, it may occur in some inclined direction as well so weight is actually a push now when you consider the weight for this surface weight is an external force because weight creates weight is created by another object on this object now in the case of Newton's third law I explained to you that if some object creates another force on a, or a strain or some pressure on another object now this object is now say you are keeping some books on a table so this this table the top surface of this table or this table is one object and this the number of books you keep on the table you can consider that to be a system and that's another object so this actually the force the action and the reaction of the forces on the two objects now this pile of books or the system of books or the composing the system composing the number of books create some force on this object so that is equal to mg the mass times the gravitational acceleration and due to this force this object the table creates another force that is the reaction for this force this is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction however the normal force is different from the concept of weight now weight always acts downwards weight acts in the direction of gravity whether the weight is on a horizontal direct or a horizontal plane as I mentioned or on, a, on an inclined plane or hanging in some vertical plane weight always acts towards the center of the earth right however the normal force is different from the weight although you can see that the normal force and the weight are in a linear manner if you keep this object on an inclined surface the normal force is perpendicular to that surface in which the object is kept it is not always vertical or not always in the direction so as to oppose gravity now in weight is always so as to favor gravity so you may assume that the normal force is so as to oppose gravity so that's completely wrong right now so that is evident from this example right you can say that the weight or the normal force opposes gravity but if you keep it on an inclined face you may have experienced that the normal force is not perpendicular to the horizontal or not acting towards the center of the earth it is perpendicular to the surface in which it is kept now weight is perpendicular to the surface and the normal force is perpendicular to the surface so if you increase the inclination like this of the surface the weight always acts downwards towards the center of the earth however when you increase this inclination the normal force adjusts its direction not the magnitude but the direction so as to make it always perpendicular to the plane in which the object is kept 
Now, when you keep an object on an inclined plane, the normal force is not equal to the actual magnitude of the weight. It's actually equal to a vector decomposition of the weight. So, I'll explain that in the concept of friction and the other concepts of mechanics. So, remember that the normal force does not always act so as to uh, refrain from gravity or so as to oppose gravity or always acts in a linear path to gravity it always acts so as to make a perpendicular angle with the plane in which that force acts so here are two occasions so as I mentioned in the case of the inclined plane you can see here that the weight always acts downwards however the normal force we normally call it as the R or some books you may have seen or some books and some other sources it, uh, it is also expressed as N because of the normal force so any term the normal force here acts perpendicular to the inclined plane perpendicular to the inclined plane not perpendicular to the horizontal either to the horizontal or to the direction in which, in which the gravity occurs so in this case if this angle is theta you can calculate the actually the component of w in this direction or the weight in this direction or you can decompose the normal force towards the weight so that you can find a relationship between the normal force and the weight in this occasion so another occasion there are various occasions in which re uh, reaction the normal force occurs so normal force occurs because there's a touch there's a touch between some surface now whether there is another force or not when there's a touch on a surface uh, normal force takes place because this force when there's a touch even uh, some micro or millinewtons this touch creates some force on this surface as a result this surface acts this surface reacts with the normal force acting on this object now since this this ladder or some inclined plane is touching with these two walls at two surfaces you can say that there exist two normal forces so those I will take as R1 and R2 and the weight of the ladder if this is symmetrical is acting right in the middle downwards so in this case also this normal force is horizontal this normal force is vertical and the weight is acting so as to favor gravity so that's the second type of force that I'll be explaining you on mechanics the ter third type of force is the friction and that will be the next part that I'll be talking about in this video and the final part is about the tension so tension will be explained in mechanics 2 in one of another videos on the series of videos on mechanics so in this video I'll explain to you in detail about the friction so before beginning the topic of friction I have to explain to you that I will explain only the friction of objects in which we have linear motion now there are occasions in which there are two or more objects that have this some friction now one object one object is kept one on the other we give some force either to the bottom object or the top object so that when there's friction either the top or the bottom objects move so there are occasions there are examples there are quizzes like that so I'll explain that in other videos I'll just give an introduction to friction in this video alright so what is friction so you know already sometimes you may have already known what is friction friction is actually a resistance force now say you are going in some direction with your car right you're traveling in a car when you apply the brakes what generally happens is that it increases the friction that doesn't mean that there's no friction when it is moving there's some friction but as I'll explain here that friction is actually diminished not the actual diminished it's overcome overcome by the forces the force provided by the engine by of the car or any other vehicle so in the case of applying brakes the friction is made to be larger than the force that is acting on the other side force that favors the motion so friction resists the motion the force from the engine favors the motion so when the friction is greater than the favoring more favoring force by that produced by the engine the object comes to a halt right so when considering friction there are two types of friction the static friction and the kinetic friction 
Now, if you are well versed in friction, you may also tell that there is another type of friction which is the limiting friction. So, limiting friction is the intermediate category between the static and the kinetic friction. Limiting friction is just an occasion that is the transition between the static and the kinetic occasions. So, limiting friction I will explain that but I will not take it as a type of friction in this video. So, static friction as its name implies say that the friction I, that static friction is the friction that occurs between two solid surfaces that do not move relative, relative to each other. Now say that you have some surface, you take that same pile of books, you keep it, keep them on the table, you provide some force. Now you know that the table is some, uh, table is a solid in fact, and table is some dry surface and it has some friction in practical. Books, they are solids and they have some friction. So, when considering the surface between the books and the table, there is some sort of friction. So, there should be a minimum force in which we have to exert on the books so that the books move relative to the table. So, when that force is not met, the objects will remain at rest. So, the friction that occurs until this object moves is called the static friction. Now say you have the same pile of books, you give some force 10 newtons, the object doesn't move. You give some force of 20 newtons, you increase that force to 20 newtons, the object doesn't move. When you increase that force to 30 newtons, say the object moves. So until 29.9999 newtons, even when you apply that 29.999 newtons the object doesn't move when you increase it by a small decimal point even the object tends to move and when you increase that even by a decimal point the object moves right so the limiting occasion is actually the occasion as i mentioned the intermediate occasion or the transition bet between the static and the kinetic occasions so static friction causes an object to stay at rest or to move with constant velocity but generally we consider the friction to be friction to make an object at rest so the static friction is always defined so that the object doesn't move right there's no relative motion relative motion between the two objects between the surfaces that experience this friction finally i have to explain that the static friction should always be greater than the applied force for that object to be not move so if the total force is say 29.999 and the static friction is 30 newtons still the object doesn't move when it is equal to 30 newtons it is just about to move whether when you decrease the force by some decimal point it tends not to move when you increase that force by a decimal point the object tends to move so at the limiting occasion static friction is harmed and the uh, applied force wins the competition between the static friction and the applied force however when the object doesn't move when you're confident that the object doesn't move you can probably say that the static frictional force should be greater than the applied force um, for this object to move so that's about also about the force resultants which i explained about the vectors and the resultant of forces decomposition of forces at the introduction videos to physics in the first chapter on the subject materials on physics. However, what's important in the case of static frictional force is that this static frictional force doesn't make the object move in the other direction. Now say you have some object like this, right? Some object like this and you apply some force, say you apply that same 29.999 newtons but the static frictional force is 30 newtons so there is actually a very smidge, right? 0 0.00001 something like that uh, force deficit between the static and the applied occasions. So that resultant force is due to the increase, due to the increment of the static frictional force than the applied force. But that increment, although you may have noticed, will not make the object move in the direction of static frictional force. So static frictional force is actually a somewhat of a binding force it doesn't make the object to move it holds the object but doesn't move the object although it is greater than the applied force so you can see that in this diagram now you can see that the static frictional force which acts on this direction is greater than the force exerted by the external source in this direction
so the frictional force is greater than the external force so the object doesn't move the object remains stationary now as opposed to the stationary friction or static friction kinetic friction means the friction that acts on a body or acts on a some surface the interface between two surfaces when the object is moving now when the applied force is equal to the frictional force we call that the limiting situation so limiting situation as i explained in a number of occasions is the intermediate or the actually the middle part of the friction that we are describing between the static and the friction kind of friction occasion it is the intermediate and it's the just moving equation between the the static frictional occasion and the kinetic frictional occasion so finally when the force is even a decimal point greater than the the minimum force required for this object to move the object starts to move and the friction at that moment is a constant for any other any object not like the kind of static frictional force so you know that the static frictional force increases with the applied force but the kinetic frictional force does not increase with the applied force so due to this reason due to the net force and due to the actually the victory of the applied force from the frictional force the object moves in the direction of the applied force so actually the frictional force increases with the applied force and reaches a maximum level the frictional force exerted at this position is called the limited frictional force so i that explained that so when the force is greater than the limited frictional force the occasion of kinetic friction occurs so you can summarize all these concepts in a simple graph like this so you can say that this is the applied force which is zero then the frictional force should be zero so when you increase the force it increases like this uh, not in a linear way but in some curved or exponent way and it has a maximum frictional force and it's called the limited frictional force it's called the maximum frictional force and beyond that it has a sudden drop sudden drop of the frictional force when the applied force is constant kept constant and then when the applied force is increased the frictional the kinetic frictional force uh, is a uh, constant and uh, doesn't actually increase or decrease with the increase applied force so since kinetic frictional force is a constant value it can be shown that if kinetic or the kinetic frictional force divided by the normal force on the object also takes a constant value so this value actually varies according to surface now if you take uh, a glass and uh, aluminium surface you can experience some constant for the f kinetic over normal friction however if you take a wooden block and uh, glass surface you can experience another one right even though you apply the same force even though there's the same normal force the f kinetic value may be different so actually the ratio between f kinetic or the kinetic friction force the force of friction that acts when the object is moving to that of the normal force varies depending on the surface right so the ratio of this actually the ratio of f kinetic to normal force is called the coefficient of frictional force so we don't normally denote that by mu k or even mu is sufficient and also in the case of the limited frictional force so so you can see in this graph in this graph that although it's just a just an occasion for a small time or small small force at the just the the actually the the occasion in which we have a transition between the static occasion and the kinetic occasion you can again apply the f equals mu n or f equals mu r occasion because uh, you know that it's actually a constant force even though it's a limiting is a very small force very what i mean is very small is force the maximum force although it's the maximum force that the object can get the maximum frictional force it's only for a very short time upon increasing the applied force so at that time at the time in which the force frictional force is in its limiting condition you can again apply uh, 
if equals mu n so that's it about the frictional force and this is the second video this is the actually the final part of the second video so in the next video i'll be talking about the collision of masses and the conservation of momentum so thanks for watching this video and see you then